So today, I want to explain uh, why we have the misconception that violent video games increase violence in our youth. Uh, these are some games, Call of Duty, Grand Theft Auto, Halo, which are the more uh, popular ones. Um, we have all seen the devastating images that arise from uh, school shootings, mass murders, such as the ones that happened in Virginia Tech, Columbine, and this one is actually from the Sandy Hook Elementary School. Um, whenever a tragedy of such great proportions happens, we always find, we try to find someone to blame. Uh, and uh, unlucky for the video game industry, uh, we have found a scapegoat in violent video games when that, is, when that shouldn't be the case. Um, there are countless studies that correlate uh, the increase in violence to violence in video games and violent media such as television. Um, but these studies are flawed. Uh, there are also studies that have proven that video games are more beneficial than the consequences than the consequences that they can have. There has also been an increase in video game sales and a decrease in violent crimes committed by our youth. And just to solely blame video games for the violence in our youth is an oversimplifi oversimplification of a complex problem. Whenever you Google the words video games or violence in video games, um, you are bombarded with studies and clinical studies and uh, all types of experiments that show that video game violence increases violence in, in our youth, uh, such as uh, Craig Anderson's, uh, they follow the same structure, such as Craig Anderson's uh, study which being Craig Anderson is the director for the study of violence at Iowa State University. And this is his quote. Working with 3,034 boys and girls in the third, fourth, seventh, and eighth grade, uh, Anderson and his colleagues asked the children three times in two years about their video game habits. Um, they were also given standardized questionnaires to, designed to measure aggressive behavior and attitudes towards violence. Uh, these studies are flawed because, for once in this study, they went to Singapore to do the study. When the culture in Singapore is different to the culture in America. Uh, secondly, the study is not controlled. There are too many variables besides the video game that can contribute to violence, not just the video game. Uh, three, you. Uh, you can't be 100% sure that the kids are being honest whenever they are answering the questions that the interviews are, interviewers are asking them or uh, filling out the questionnaires in a truthful manner. Uh, games have also been proven to be beneficial, including those of violent nature such as Call of Duty, Halo, and Grand Theft Auto, as you guys saw earlier. Um, according to Lisa Bowen, writer for the American Psychiatric Association, First-person shooter games have been linked to strengthening spatial navigation, reasoning, memory, and perception, which has critical implications for education and uh, career development. She also states that uh, video games teach children resilience uh, through failure. As children fail throughout games, they have to learn how to defeat the, defeat the boss and then they get to the next level. And then children can use this emotional resilience in their everyday lives. Uh, we focus too much on the negative aspects of violence in video games when there are so many more positives. Uh, we also have uh, increased hand-eye coordination and uh, critical thinking skills, but those two were the most important of those ones I uh, chose to focus more on. Um, Video game sales are at an all-time high, and <coughs> crimes for young offenders are on the decline. Um, according to the Times, between 1994 and 2010, the number of crimes 
uh, among young offenders have decreased by more than half to 224 per population of 100,000. At the same time, uh, video game sales have more than doubled since 1996. Video games, video games are not the reason for the decreasing crime, but if we were to follow the same logic that the studies that you see all over the internet, then if the increase of violent video game sales have gone up, then so should the crime rate. But uh, it, it has gone, it has actually gone down. Um, according to Christopher J. Ferguson, a uh, member of the American Psychiatric Association, uh, has his PhD in psychology. He states, in my own research, I have no evidence that video games or TV contribute to youth violence, dating violence, bullying, or adult arrest. Further, youth, <coughs> youth uh, violence has gone, youth violence has decreased, and youth violence has decreased and video game sales have been at an all-time high. Uh, say, saying violent, violent video games are responsible for mass murders and uh, school shootings, which seem to be the biggest concern for parents and psychiatrists, is an oversimplification of a complex problem. Uh, according to Harvard Medical School, there needs to be a combination of three factors for there to be a high risk for a child to be violent after playing video games. And these combinations are neuroticism, which is being prone to anger, being emotional, depression, and easily upset. Uh, the second one is dis disagreeableness, which is being cold and indifferent. And the third is a uh, decrease in levels of conscientiousness which is prone to acting out without thinking and breaking rules. Uh, in conclusion, I believe that violent video games should not be, uh, should not be blamed for the increase in, in, violent video games should not be the blame for the increase in violence in our youth because there really is an increase in violence in our youth. Um, there is plenty of research supporting that there is more benefits than consequences to playing by, by like video games. And All right, Afari, what did you think? So, first of all, you chose a good topic, very interesting. Uh, at the beginning, it wasn't really mentioning the three main points, what we're going to talk about here. And uh, there are two things they should improve, and his voice can, should be louder, this is louder. And he talked a little about the advantages of how uh, you play video games. You should have spoken more. And, uh, uh, strong points. Uh, I like that you the statistics of the increase of violent games and uh, the picture of violent kids. And uh, overall, the speech it was good and the end was in a good way. Yeah, and each other interesting and effective. All right.
right, let's start off with a couple of things that are pretty good. You've got uh, a lot of information in the speech. I think that uh, you've got citations on the benefits of video games. You've got quotes on kind of criticizing the general uh, negative attitude about video games. Some of those quotes seem a little redundant because I think I heard the same two or three sentences in four different places in your speech. So you do have a lot of information that you can use to support your point. Um, and I think that you do a pretty good job speaking to the audience. You look at us, uh, you are interested in the topic, you're doing a, a nice job trying to connect with us while you're speaking, so I think that that's uh, a pretty strong point. There are some things that I, and, and the topic, I think it's a, it's a good topic to talk about for an audience like this. People who play those games, they hear this kind of stuff. This is a subject that I think people will be intrigued by. Now, some things that are, I think, a little bit problematic. Organizationally, it does not fit together quite the way it should. It really feels a little bit like you are all over the place. Like I said, I heard the same kind of argument in two or three different places, and you need to make it a little bit more coherent. Let's talk about why the research that links video games to violence is problematic and let's look at the facts that show that that can't really be the truth because of the game sales in comparison to the amount of violence that's going on. Now, let's put that aside for a second. We've got that out of the way. Let's look at what the potential benefits are of playing those, these video games. Here's what all those potential benefits are and, and let's discuss it. You've got a simple two-part structure. That's, a, that's an easy speech. All right, and it's pretty straightforward to follow. But I get criticism of the research, then a little bit of information about uh, some benefits, and then some more criticism of research, and then background on why kids can't really become violent unless they have these predispositions in these particular categories. And then here's some more stuff that says that the video games will be positive. So it really feels like you are recycling through the material over and over again instead of building something that is clear and easy to follow. So I think organization is a big problem with the speech that you need to fix that. I think uh, visuals could have helped you a little bit with that. The, um, the video game images that you have at the beginning, that's okay, that's just you know a, a topic identification kind of stuff that doesn't get you much. And the, uh, the kids at Sandy Hook, uh, that gives us a little bit of a justification as to why we're talking about that issue. But they have nothing to do with explaining the issues that you're talking about. They just identify what the topic area is. So, a, a graph on that first point, for instance, that shows here's what video games are doing when it comes to sales, and here's what crime is doing when it comes to young people. And you can see that these paths are not crossing. You know, it's like video games going up like this, crime going down like this. How can we see this particular relationship that's going on here? That's a little bit problematic. What about the potential benefits? Well, you know, according to this one piece of research, people who uh, play these video games have faster response times or greater memory and that sort of thing. So, so how much greater is their memory? You know, uh, here's, here's a, uh, a graph or a visual from the research that shows us, you know, their ability to recall is 33% higher or their response time is 25% quicker or something along those lines as a way of, because that's the point that you're trying to make, that there are benefits to playing these uh, particular games too, that they're going to have those kinds of benefits. So I think you need some visuals that really talk about the subject that you're talking about, not just identifying the topic, but, you know, helping you make the point that you were trying to make in the presentation. Um, let me see. I, I do wonder, for instance, since you're using the general criticism of video games, well, we should be getting more violence if video game sales have been going up and they've been more violent, and we're not getting that. The first thing that popped in my head after you said that is, okay, and where's the proof that the, as the video game sales are going up that we are getting faster on our responses, better on our memory, doing more effective intellectually. We, if that is the relationship, then we ought to be seeing some measure of that. Is there any measure of that? And you know, I don't know that there is or there isn't, uh, but you don't have anything that goes that way, and it would be the perfect counterpoint to the point that you're making on the other side. So that jumped in there. One of the things that occurred to me that as I was listening that would have been helpful as a visual in that last part where you're talking about what the psychologist says that you've got to have for kids to actually be affected by this or to have a negative 
uh, violent re uh, behavior, they have to have these kinds of preconditions. Well, there's a simple list. You, you, you give a list with a little definition of it, and these things are required, and the video game is, is, may tip those people over, or it may not, but 96% of kids don't have these predispositions. That's the kind of thing that's, that would be easy to visualize. Even if you just use the words, it would, be, it would help us remember that information. I can't tell you what the terms were that you used there. You, know, you, you had like four terms that these, they had to have these preconditions or, you know, I don't know what the terms were. You, know, you said them. But that doesn't mean that they're easy to remember. And this, that's, like I said, one of those things a visual could help with. All right? All right. Thank you.